situation attracted you to this franchise, and, and what what makes this? What why do you think this is going to be a great fit for you? Oh man, you know, I just say God. Honestly, I left everything in God's hand. You know, during the whole entire little situation where it was going on, and you know, I just stayed prayed up and just let God do His work. How did you get the news officially that the trade kind of was going through, and what was your reaction? To that? Uh, it was it was kind of nerve wracking, I can say, uh, because uh, me and my agent, it was, it was a whole lot of back and forth. And you know, my agent was telling me to be calm and just let everything, you know, come out. Then I say, like, when, last Monday is when I realized, you know, I'm going to get the trade. And there was a report that $22 million is what you guys were after. You settled at 19. Like, Is that report true? And then how did you get to the 19? How did that process? I mean, I just feel you? like I deserve to be, you know, to be the highest paid off of my season that I had last year. And, you know, that's why I want to shoot that number up there high. And I feel that I deserved it. But, you know, things worked out to me. To, for me and for my family and you no know, for the organization of the Tennessee Titans. How Happy to be here. How was the conversation with Rand? You know, <clears throat> oh, it was, it was, it's, it's, it's great. You know, I feel a connection already. You know, I feel like family. You know, he's making me feel comfortable already. You know, in this facility, and it's my first time meeting him and the whole organization. What do you think about the situation you're, you're coming into, Jerry's, in terms of having a defensive coordinator who was a secondary guy and, and playing with Chidobe also? What, Oh man, I, I I can say uh you know we're gonna have something very special you know everybody is new coming into here and you know we got enough time to build you know to see what we have. You're, you're a guy who's made massive leaps from the time you came into the what, league. What's been the key in your development to taking those big chunks? Oh, uh, definitely game? each year, man. You know I go back and I watch my film. Whatever I can get better at, that's what I try to do each year, each year, and this year I'm gonna do the same. What were some of the things that you felt like clicked last year that allowed you to have the season you did? Oh, man, I wanted to follow the number one guys and the best guys on the field. That's what I wanted to do. You know, each year I try to make new challenges, challenge myself. You're coming from a situation where winning has been a part of the culture there for a while. How do you feel like you can bring some of that here? Oh, man, just bring my swagger. You know, just bring what I learned, you know, what the coaches over there installed in me and bring it here. And I think we're going to be okay. Obviously, I'll see you play. What, what, what would you say you bring to the field, maybe bring to the maybe team, bring to the... Oh, man, confidence, you know, resiliency, relentless. I'm a <coughs> hell of a player. You know, I love my game. You know, I, I don't fear anything. You know, I'm not afraid to lose, but I'm going to win most of my reps. When it comes to your leadership, this is a cornerback's room, a, a DB's room that has been young uh, for the last couple of years for the most part. What do you feel leadership-wise you can bring to this group? Oh, man, you know, coming from, you know, other team, my, but my last team and guys I play with who installed in me, you know, I'm still learning myself. You know, I, I will never stop learning and I'm still growing and still learning. The guys installed in me what they told me, I'm going to try to install in these guys and bring you here, you know, what I know and what they know and put it together Steve as a whole. Said that your group last year, in terms of your defense in Kansas City, was the smartest he's ever worked with. How important is that? Not just the skill part, but but the you know the smarts in terms of that ah, position. Yeah, I can say uh, you know I know what it took. You know, it's it's not only in the in the building. You know, we took time out of the building coming together. You know, as in praying or coming together as one as a whole and. That's what I'm gonna try to bring here, just try to pull us together. And I think when we together as a whole, we can play good. That coverage, you, you know, traveling with receivers, that's something you specialize in. Mm -hmm. I know you went to Spagnuolo and said that's something you wanted to do before the season. Why is it that that's something you take so personally? Oh man, you know, I, if I can eliminate one guy, you know, their best player on the field, it help everybody else around us. You know, just like the guys on the D line. You know, he get to the quarterback, he help us out on the back end, and that's how I feel like on Mills with the corner spot. What is it that allows you to do that so effectively? Because like not a lot of guys who go left, right, play the nickel as well. Right, you know, it's, it's it's all just a mindset, really. You know, you have it in your mind, you can do anything you put your mind to. Sorry, Tanner. Did you do you expect to be doing that here on a regular basis? Oh, uh, hopefully, whatever he put me at, you know, I'm gonna tell him put me wherever he want to put me, and I'm gonna give it my best. How much of an edge do you think that gives a defense if, if a guy is doing that? Oh, man, it, it gives the defense a whole lot. You know, if you eliminate their best player, you know, they have to rearrange their offense and, you know, do things to that they don't do. And, you know, let's mess it up. Calvin Ridley was one of the guys you matched up with that way mm -hmm. last year. What, what do you think about him? And oh, him yeah, man, I can't wait to get to work with Calvin, man. You know, we had words during the, during the game. He's hell of a wide receiver, you know. I don't think nobody else is running routes like that guy. Your, your numbers last year 
year against Tyreek Hill was especially impressive. I think he had one catch in, in two games. Um, what did, you know? What were some of the keys in that, and, and how much confidence did that give you? You know, moving forward. Uh, I can say, uh, Coach Reed, he was testing me all throughout the week. I think he was just trying to get me fired up. You know, he was sending me all of the mess that was talking, everything that was saying about me. You know, I use that as motivation. You know, I don't be on the media looking at what people are saying about me because I don't get into that. But, you know, Coach Reed was sending it to me, get me fired up, and, you know, I was sticking it to the heart. Do you know guys on this team, and have you gotten a scouting report about Nashville and, and the fights from anybody? Uh, no, sir, I haven't. Do you know anybody on this team? Uh, I know a couple guys. I know Jeff. You know, I know uh, Cheeto. Win after you wrap, and you talked about Calvin, but, but who are you going to look for every day in practice first, DeAndre or, or Calvin? Uh, both on great receivers, so whoever lined up in front of me, they, they this is going to get to work. <laughs> you able to wear that suit in Kansas City and tell, tell us a little bit about the colors and how you? Yeah, play. man, I can't wear this at Kansas City's. Yeah, you know, I had to step out, you know, a little bit, a little bit harder than what I usually do. Going from Coach Merritt to to here, you know, with. with Denar Wilson, Steve Jackson, uh, Chris Harris. What do you know about those guys? And just if you've talked to Wilson already, how do you like the energy that he? Oh man, I love, I love the energy. He seems like he's my type of coach, as of being aggressive. And, you know, that's what I like to do. I like to put my hands on guys, I like to be in their face, and just be aggressive with guys. You know, they throw everything off time and it all. Bags is really aggressive with DB blitzing as well, and trying to get after the quarterback in that way. How much does that, you know, suit your skill set? And, and is that something you want to do more of here in Tennessee? I know, um, n not quite as much last. Oh uh, yeah, just like I told Spaz, you know, just throw me on the field, you know, just like he did. He threw me at nickel out of nowhere mid-season, and I didn't know anything about it. And you know, I just executed it and played my best. Your fourth round pick at, a, at Louisiana Tech. You know, how did the confidence build uh, over the years that, that you could become the cornerback that you Yes, uh, I say uh, the confidence built over the years. It got better and better over the years, I can say. You know, coming mm -hmm. as a low draft, you know, from a small school, you know, everybody didn't believe in me. And, you know, but I stayed down and kept working. Was there a game or maybe a receiver you covered where you kind of felt like you proved it to yourself that, hey, I can do this? Uh, yes, Devontae Adams. When I first landed up against him. He was, was that, at Green Bay. Was that rookie year? Or was that second year? That was second year. Second year. Yeah. Yo, now that you've gotten paid, where, where does the chip come from for you? Uh, the money don't change anything. You know, I love this game for the game. The money just for my family. You know, to get them right, take a little pressure off my shoulders. You know, now I can do what I love and play ball. Coach in Kansas City that I talked to raved about you as a teammate and as a person in the community. Uh, how much are you looking to? do that here, especially knowing that you, you're, you're good for at least four years? Oh, definitely, man. Just how, you know, God used me in Kansas City. I'm going to make sure, you know, he used me here, you know, in Tennessee, you know, giving back to the community. Whatever I can do, you know, whatever God has planned for me in my life in Tennessee, that's what I'm bringing here. The situation with the knees, I mean, you played plenty of snaps. You didn't miss any games. But how did you manage it last year, and how do you look to manage that going forward? Oh, man, yeah, ain't nothing wrong with my knee. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. You know, I played the whole season. And the years before that, I played as well. You know, I had a couple of problems. You know, I had banged up knee before, but I'm good right now. Nothing is really wrong with my knee. So it's not a situation that you have to manage going forward. No, I know what to do with my knee. You know, I'm coming out here to play ball. But, uh, you take a lot of pride in your, your run stopping ability too. Had some good numbers against the Oh, uh, definitely. I love going against those big guys. You know, they can't. You know, get low as I get. Majerus, the aggressiveness that, that you have, like I co I talked to uh, Coach Mira and he said you're, you're the most aggressive corner he's coached in like 27 years in the NFL. Where does that come from or who are maybe your biggest influences in, in your style of play? Uh, I actually don't know where it came from. Uh, I've always been an aggressive guy. But the last two years, I made up in my mind that I'm going to put hands on guys. You know, I've seen it that it worked, you know, so... I'm gonna put my hands on guy, mess timing up, and you know they can't do nothing with it. They can't do nothing within five yards. Me put my hands on and slow it down. A quarterback looking away, so yeah, it's all mental. Beyond, beyond being an aggressive cover corner, what kind of guy are you in terms of being a teammate? Are you a vocal leader? Are you? Are you uh, a I want yes. People? What yes, I want to say that I'm very vocal. I'm not the rah rah guy. I'm not gonna be all down your neck or this. I might pull you to the side, say you work on this, work on that, or even work with you to get better. You know, get out the field. Or, Call you out to practice, you know. I'm a leader like that. I'm not the one that's going to be all down your neck screaming and yelling. No, that's not me. Oh, 
your willingness to play anywhere on the field, just wanting to be out there, how much does that kind of help you with your background, having safety experience as well? What did you learn from that experience? Oh, man, it's, it's definitely, you know, helped me out along the run, playing safety, you know, in playing corner, because that safety, I was coming down as a nickel spot. You know, I feel like that helped me out a lot, you know. So you mentioned physicality and aggressiveness, Lugarius, in your opinion, what else does it take to be a premier lockdown corner in this league? Uh, you got to have fluid hips. You know, you can't always use your hands. You know, once you get beat, you're going to get beat a couple of times, you know, here and there, but, you know, you got to have fluid hips. How did you come about getting fluid hips? Uh, letter drills, you know, get with my coaches, you know, and just work on it. Oh, I, I knew, I knew, I knew it was gonna come. You know, years prior, before that, you know, Russell told me you're a little too aggressive. You know, and they tell me before games, they would come up to tell me, "I'm watching you, Sneed. I'm watching, you, I'm watching you." Yeah. So even if I put my hands on guys, you know, even if it slip and hit them in the chin, and you know they flop, you know, I still get a flag. You know, yeah. It's part of cause of business. So. You have a thought on the new rule? No hip drop tackles. Yeah, I do not like that. Yeah, they might be going to put flags on us, man. <laughs> like, it make it tough when you're going into And you thinking about that, yeah. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. am I doing, is, am I going to get called? I mean, how does that, does it affect, how can, how can you say it? Like, uh, it me, me, uh, me, I don't care, me personally. I'm going to go make the tackle whichever way. If it's that way, I'll take the flag, uh, whatever, yeah. I'll make sure I get them down, though. <laughs> No, I just want to, um, you know, obviously it's a, a really good day for us um, as Titans to uh, officially announce Legarius and have him here. So we're uh, extremely excited about that. Um, just getting him here in the building, getting him with, uh, you know, Coach Wilson and Chris and Steve has been good. The energy has been great. Um, and it, we were talking, you know, with his mom, uh, Mama Sneed, and kind of telling her how small the football world is. And an example was her best friend knows Chris Harris from college. You know what I mean? So our football world is really small. But uh, looking at uh, looking forward to having him in the building on a regular uh, basis with all the rest of the guys. Uh, but more than anything, I just wanted to get up here and speak to you guys a little bit about free agency. You know, and uh, we haven't had a chance to uh, speak. I know I spoke with uh, – Paul 101, Jim 101 about free agency. Um, just overall, man, we came in with a targeted plan and, um, you know, an idea of what we wanted to do. And that was, you know, started by our pro uh, department, you know, and those guys led by Brian Gardner, um, as well as our coaching staff being able to come in, hit the ground running. Um, and one thing I want to say, and I don't think we do this enough, uh, I want to thank Miss Amy, you know, uh, for allowing us to do the things that we've done. Um, this doesn't happen, you know, without her approving it and being okay with it as well as Kenneth and Barkley. Um, it was a lot of conversations with them. Uh, we had a meeting to let them know what our targeted plan was, um, how we were uh, going to go about it. And she was on board 100% supportive. And even when we had to pivot, you know, making her aware of what we were doing. Um, and so, you know, I want to thank her for allowing us to do that. You know, also uh, Anthony Robinson, you know, leading our personnel department, you know, Chad Brinker, uh, Vin Marino, um, you know, Vin is a, Vin is a stud. I know Vin, you know, walks around pretty unassuming most days. Uh, but Vin is the, is the magic that, uh, allowed these deals to come to fruition. Um, him and his relationships, Chad and his relationships, my relationships, a Rob's relationships, our pro department, we really lean on everybody. Um, and it's not just myself, you know, leading the charge on getting players in here. It's wherever we have an advantage or relationship, we like to take advantage of that. Um, so you guys are aware of, you know, everybody we signed. Um, glad to talk about those guys and, you know, in particular if you guys have questions. So just open it up to you guys. How much does the signing or this, the trade and signing your sneak move the needle for you this year? I mean, that seems to be a very large piece to this equation. Yeah, I mean, it, it helps us tremendously out from a coverage standpoint on the back end. And, you know, if you guys know Denard and what he wants to do, I think the guys that we signed uh, in Cheeto and, um, and LJ, I think they both, you know, fit what he wants to do uh, from a coverage standpoint. And then having Roger here, you know, Roger's played outside, he's played inside, and so he fits um, as well. So it gives us, you know, a legitimate, you know, top three out of the gate, and we're going to continue to add guys. We're going to expect guys that were here last year to step up, you know, and earn those other spots. But uh, we, we're bringing in scheme fits for what we're going to do defensively. Do you expect this group to be the best secondary in the league? That's up for them to decide. 
Um, you know, we paid a lot of money to get those two guys on the outside, so I I expect those guys to play, you know, really well. Um, and But I know one thing is that they'll be coached extremely hard. They'll be really detailed in the way they approach it. So I expect those guys to play well this year. With how this defense has been built, how do you, how are you looking at the, the pass rush? Where is, is this a situation where it's like the secondary, they're going to have to going to be strong from the back end to the front end? Like how do you uh, address that? No, we want to build a complete defense. Um, you know, in, in, in the past, we've had our strength be up front, you know, and that's kind of shifted right now. But we're still looking – uh, to address those positions as needed. Um, from a free agency standpoint, free agency is open. It's not over. So we're going to continue to look. And then obviously we got the draft, which is taking our focus now. Uh, so we're going to continue to look to add, you know, up front um, on, on all sides of the ball. Um, but it, we're, we're still working on that. You said that uh, I think we told Jim Paul about you wanted to resign Nico and wanted to resign Al Shire, I'm assuming, at the right price. But uh, once you didn't get those guys, you went out and got rid. Was that what you were talking about as a pivot, or could you have made all of that happen? Um, there was a scenario uh, that Vin and Chad put together where we could have uh, assembled the Avengers, um, but we wouldn't have had money to sign our draft class or do anything else. So those were scenarios. Um, but uh, Danico and, um, and Aziz were two vital members, you know, of our, our team. Um, Aziz was an official captain and uh, Danico was an unofficial captain, um, as you guys know. Uh, so those guys were, you know, play huge parts for us. And, you know, it's going to suck to see them leave and have to play them twice a year. But, um, you know, we feel like we'll, you know, we'll find ways to, to get better and replace those guys. Is your starting right tackle on the roster right now? Is your starting left tackle in the draft? <clears throat> Um, we'll answer draft questions at a later date because, um, again, this is more about free agency. Um, and to say is our starting right tackle, um, we got more than five offensive linemen on the uh, on the roster. So we can roll out any five and call them starters <laughs> if you want to at this point. Um, but, we're uh, again, we're going to, like I just told you know, TD, we're going to continue to look to bolster up front. Uh, we've added weapons around Will, still got to be able to protect him. Got two good backs out of backfield that can make explosive plays. So we want to um, continue to balance this thing out, you know, and make this a balanced football team. Yeah, when it comes to the, the safety position, you still <clears throat> possibly looking to add something to free agency there? What would that be? You know, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, the amount of, you know, safeties that are on the street right now, it's, it's, uh, it's a plethora of guys that have played a ton of ball. Um, in the league, we visited some guys, and we, you know, we're going to continue to do our due diligence, you know, on those guys and see where the market, you know, brings us. Um, but right now, like I said, we start draft meetings next week, and so that'll be, you know, what is it? Where we April second, uh, so the draft is 24 days away, and so I think that takes precedent right now uh, to fine tune that plan and bring everybody together on that. So really looking forward to that part of it. Uh, but there, are, there are a lot of good players still on the street that can help us. Do you look at that in shifts at, at safety pre-draft, or do you think something like that likely settles down until post-draft? Well, I think um, just the way the league goes. I mean, everyone is going to be you know excited about the new shiny toys um, that are the that is the draft class and. You know, once once we get through the draft and we see where teams have, you know, made their needs because there are other teams that need safeties, um, I think it could take the safety market either way, uh, depending on, you know, who's available, you know, at that time. And uh, we've been well positioned uh, and well thought out in our plan of still being able to attack, you know, post-draft, uh, kind of like we did with DeAndre last year, to be in position to sign a player if we need to. As you look at that inside backer position, how do you rate that free agency against rookies, whereas, like, you know, a rookie, he has to come in and learn his own job. And that's tough. But then telling everybody else their job, like, how do you rate that against each other? I think you, I think it's all about the person um, and the type of player. Um, I've been um, – my first year in Atlanta, uh, we had a, a rookie second-round pick in Curtis Lofton. Uh, that was our Mike Backer, but he was lying next to a veteran in Keith Brooking um, as our Will Backer. And, and Keith uh, wore the communicator that first year, and then Curtis took it over that second year. So um, – you know, for it's it's about the person you have. You have some rookies. Uh, Fred Warner, I was a part of drafting um, his. Uh, what was it? His first year, he was the green dot. So it's all about that person, what that person's uh, comfortable with, um, and if they're able to handle the communication and they're a three down player, then they'll be out there. I've seen teams. Um, I want to say it was um, Eric Weddle 
you know, when he was with the Chargers and when he was with the Rams, he wore the green dot. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a linebacker that does the communication. Um, it's just about finding that person that's going to be able to do that and still effectively do their job. Is there consideration for Kenneth Murray to, to wear that, or that's something? No, we had we hadn't crossed that bridge yet. Uh, honestly, we hadn't. We don't even have uh, K nine in the building right now. Um, so uh, he'll be here next week, and once they're able to get with our coaches, you know, I totally trust Coach Bush and Denard to figure out who's going to be the best to uh, lead that group and get them lined up. What do you see a lot about of guys in the safety market that, that are still out there? Uh, thoughts on on the tackle market? What what are your thoughts on? <laughs> no, they're still good players. Players have played you know a ton of snaps uh, in this league, but you know not to get too far ahead. But the, this tackle draft class is is pretty deep. Um, and so we're going to, you know, like we always do, we're going to find the best option for us um, and, and hopefully we make the right decision. With the change of the return rule, does that make you more inclined to look for somebody who can specifically do that role? Well, it's, this league is all about the more you can do. Um, and, you know, taking those, it's only you only get 53 roster spots and you get the two elevations. So whoever we decide to be our returner, hopefully they can bring more than just returning unless they're just flat out dynamic. If they're Devin Hester or Dante Hall or one of those guys, we'll gladly take them. Um, but we love for them, you know, to do a little bit more. And I think with the uh, new change of the kickoff rule, it's going to be an adjustment period for everybody um, because, again, we got to figure out how this thing is going to be policed you know, throughout the league, it's it's a in, in my opinion, it's different from saying we're going to be an emphasis on the hip drop tackle or you know holding or you know illegal contact. Those are things that have uh, traditionally been policed in this league, but we're changing the structural way in which you do a play that we've never had before in our league. So the preseason is going to be very important for us more than anything to figure out how we're going to be able to execute you know that play for us to start the game because it's really going to be the first offensive snap kind of the techniques that go into kick blocking as well to more of an offensive line technique. Is Bill Callahan an asset in that area as well? And do you think he can get involved with special teams to help you? Well, that's going to be between Colt and Big Coach to figure out, you know, where he's going to be able to help him in the structure of how we're going to do that. Uh, that's not for me to speak on, but I'm sure – if there's anything that has to do with blocking up front and being able to keep people off of whether it's our quarterback, our kicker, our punter, if, if Coach Callahan has a technique, I'm sure we'll use it. Brand, when, you watch, when you watch video of Snead, what specifically jumps off it's, the screen at? It's funny you say that. They, um, you know, we were just touring him and his family through the building, and we stopped in, uh, in the cafeteria to get his son uh, a drink. And you look up on the screen and playing on the network was – uh, the Philly Kansas City Super Bowl, and as soon as you turn your eyes up, it was him coming up making a tackle, you know, knocking the ball loose. And Mama sneezed. She was like, "Oh, these guys are good. They had this queued up for as soon as you walked in." And I was like, "Mama, I promise you, we're not that good. <laughs> it was just luck of the draw." But he covers people. We know that, you know. And you guys have talked about it. Him being able to match, you know, and go in the slot, play outside, and take away the other team's number one. But again, the physicality the willingness to come up and make tackles. All, a lot of the greats in the game, we know Coach Prime, you know, was probably arguably the best cover corner ever, but people always criticized him for his quote-unquote lack of tackling, uh, if you will. But what he brings to us in LJ and what Cheeto is going to bring on the, you know, on the opposite side are two guys that, you know, like I said before, I couldn't remember if it was with Jim or with Paul, you know, a lot of the run game is this toss-crack game. Right. Because now these corners can't come and cut the lineman, you know, underneath. You have to be physical and be able to set the edge and, you know, force it back to the stack. And we have two corners now that are physical that will put their face on people setting the edge and send it back to guys like Jeff and Kenneth and all our guys coming in, you know, running, chasing the ball. So that's an impressive part, you know, about his game that I think that really stands out. That, that tree, it, it took a little over a week to be official. What was the hold up there? And can you just kind of like take us through how how that? It was it was really logistics, because um, you get the you get the trade done, and because he was franchised, it was the way you have to go about getting the contract executed, and all those things. And we literally left the next day, or maybe a day or two later, going to owners meetings, you know. And so we had other options that we could have done, um, but it was more of a logistical thing. It had nothing else to do with anything other than us not all being in the same spot, Kansas City not all being in the same spot. So it was more logistics than anything. One more question about Cal, if I could, Calvin Ridley. 
he missed a lot of ball previous two seasons before <clears> last <throat> year. What did he do last year to convince you that he was worth the investment? I mean, Calvin, you know, I think LJ said it. You know, he's one of the better separators in the league. You know, um, I had a moment uh, last – it was last off offseason um, in our courtship, you know, of, of uh, Hop. And a bunch of those guys were out in Arizona working out, and it was Ridley, and it was Debo Samuels, and it was D Hop. And so all these guys were working out. And the consistent thing you heard out of Arizona was everybody was stealing tricks from Calvin. You know, a guy that had been out, you know, a year and everyone was talking about how legit that he looks and how they were, t you know, and these are all pro pro bowl players saying they were taking tools out of his bag, you know, to help their game. And then you to actually see that translate in the season, you know, him being able to get open, separate, you know, his speed, you know, his ability to track the ball like those things stand out. And so the to actually have the opportunity um, to even consider him was something that we had a part of our plan, but it was in our mind, really, it was more of a pipe dream. You know, like, can we afford these guys and get, you know, Ridley? And it initially started with a conversation with myself and Chad. And uh, I won't go into the details of how that conversation started. Uh, I'm laughing because Chad's over here and he knows it. Um, but it was one of those things where we agreed to talk the next day. You know, let's just say it that way. Like, let's just talk about it in the morning. And then it led to a conversation with myself and Callie that same night. And on my drive home, I talked to Miss Amy about it, you know, because, again, we like to keep her in the loop of all things. And so um, we came in the next morning and everybody kind of had that look like, let's do it. You know, let's try. And and we did. And, you know, we were able to pull it off and show you how this world works now. Um, we legitimately we get the deal done. The deal gets agreed to. So we're in the office. You know, we're having a moment. And, you know, in this particular moment, it was myself, it was Chad, it was Callie and Nick Holtz. So we're high-fiving and bro-hugging and doing all of that. And so we're like, hey, let's get Calvin on the phone. Let's congratulate him. So we literally, this is all happening in within 90 seconds. We call Calvin, we're FaceTiming him, and we're, we're excited and he's excited. And then my phone beeps and it's Miss Amy. And I pick up the phone and I'm like, hello? And she's like, is this true? And I'm like, is what true? And she was like, did we just get Calvin Ridley? And I'm like, what the hell? Like, is it out already? It's been like, we, I was like, we're on the phone with him right now, you know, congratulating him that we got this done. But it just kind of shows you just the level of our teamwork, you know, and making it happen and getting it done. And like I said before, it's, it's not about me. It's not about Cali. It's not about any one individual in our in our program. It's just about who gives us the best advantage to get something done that's going to make us better, and that's the route we go. Thanks, yep. Thank you.